Have you guys ever been riding around and if you're like me, you use engine braking on your motorcycle a lot and if you're in heavy traffic and you come to a pretty quick stop without using your brakes, do you ever have that moment where you're like, I really hope the giant truck that is riding my ass is not going to plow into me because my brakes aren't going to come on because most of the time I use engine braking. Do you guys ever do that? So, uh, my wife is actually the one that kind of put me onto this idea. Uh, she was following me somewhere on my motorcycle and she was just following me around and like we were going to somewhere probably to drop the bike off. And I was engine braking from a high speed. So I was slowing down, but my bike didn't show that I was slowing down. My brake lights weren't coming on and she was progressing up close to me. Now she didn't get close to me. She didn't almost hit me or anything. But when we got to our destination, she was like, you know, the way you ride is really dangerous. And I was like, what do you, <laughs> what do you mean it's very dangerous? Uh, of course it is, it's a motorcycle. Uh, and she explained to me that I was coming to a stop quickly without my brake lights coming on and that somebody that wasn't paying attention, which here in Atlanta, nobody pays attention. I digress. Here, that's very dangerous. So when the other day, this company reached out with this really interesting product, that's the story that it made me think about. Us as motorcyclists that use engine braking a lot to slow down, we got a kind of dangerous problem. But today, if this product that I was sent works, we might alleviate that problem. So uh, before we get this video started, the guys over at Brake Free just sent me this product to test out. They are not paying me. This is not a sponsored video. I have no vested interest in that company. Uh, but what I've been sold on with this thing is it just attaches to the back of your helmet and using, I guess, like an intervalometer or something like that, it's supposed to be able to tell if you're braking or not. And braking means that you are slowing down. It doesn't mean that you are applying brakes. Um, so we're going to get this thing unboxed, uh, put it on a helmet and go test it out in today's video. Very interested what this thing is all about. You guys, look at that. All right, uh, let's check out what's in the box here. Let me readjust. All right, that should work. Okay, so we got all the, <laughs> they really want you to read the quick start guide. Okay, so we will read this, but this is what I'm interested in. Look at this thing, guys. Unboxing looks pretty sweet. So obviously there's like a little mount, kind of like a GoPro, you know, where this thing will click on. We've got a charging port here at the bottom. It's an older USB thing. Cool. So everybody's got the cables for that. We got a power button at the top and there's, there's nothing else to do. Okay. Let's see. How do you do this? That's cool. Okay. We got a charging cable as well. Look how tiny, look how tiny this guy is. I don't know why I expected this to be so much bigger, but it's definitely not. All right, so that's the mount. So I guess what this does is you get a couple of these mounts, and then if you have a you know if you have multiple types of helmets, I don't know who would have multiple types of helmets. Uh, you could have a couple of these mounts, and then you would only have to have one unit. You could like click it onto a lot of other helmets. You could also click it off to go charge it. That'd be cool. Okay. Uh, that's all the stuff. That's everything that comes in the box. It's pretty, it's pretty minimal. I like it though. Good unboxing experience. Everything was easy to do. All right, allow me a moment while I read the quick start guide so I can explain to you what's happening. Oh, thank God. Any other company that's making a product, just make it lots of pictures, please. I hate reading except for those comments that you guys are leaving. Let me know what you guys think about this stuff down in the comments down below. I will actually read those and like this video for pictures. If you're like me and you like pictures. If you don't like pictures, then get off this video. Jesus. goes. It's literally click this into here. You know, do the whole like clean your helmet with alcohol so you have a clean surface, stick it on and you're good. What I'd like to do, you know, you guys probably saw, I just did a Rurok Berserker unboxing the other day. That blows. That means I can't put this on 
the Rurok. Oh, but it fits so well. Hold on. One of the benefits of being a sponsored rider, one second, I got a helmet that has nothing on it. So, lucky for me, Rurok just dropped their, I think they call it Drop 2, which is Atlas 2.0 with new color things. So, I honestly never planned on riding <laughs> in this helmet, but that is changing today. Okay, I need a helmet stand, because I don't want to ruin this helmet. Okay, so, ooh, if I do this, this is going to mess up the uh, DOT sticker. Glad I don't care. Okay, click it on. And then to get it off, oh, I don't know if you guys could see that. I was wondering, because once you get this thing on, it's like stuck on there, but it's more of like a, you press it in, and then to take it off, you just push it down, and it comes out. Okay, so first off, let's make sure this will fit. This might be the perfect helmet to do this with, because it's got all the little red lines in it, so this is almost going to look... Legit. Ah, oh, we can't do it up there though. So if you guys notice, the uh, it doesn't touch in there. Can you? I don't even know if you could see that. So I was trying to get it to mount in there, but it won't. Can I mount it at the top? This is sad times. That this means that I can't put it on a Rurok. Okay, so this is bad news. This means I cannot ride around with a Rurok helmet with this. Let, allow me to find any other helmet I have that this will work on, and I'll be right back. Okay, uh, luckily your boy reviews motorcycle gear, and I have another helmet that I currently don't have anything installed on. So we will, we will put the Ruroks aside just for now. I'm sorry, Rurok. I've got this little AGV modular helmet that I have nothing installed on the back. I do have a cardio unit on the side. So, I was playing with it, and boom, right over the AGV logo, or we could just do it down here. I don't know where we should do it. Maybe like right there, right in the center. Because look how much space this thing has on the back. So, <laughs> I'm gonna be riding around for the first time in modular helmet. This is gonna be hilarious. Okay. Uh, to be clear, I really wish this worked on a Rurok because I think it would look so much cooler on, uh, on this guy. But regardless, don't have that option today. Okay, let's clean this area with some, uh, like some alcohol and then we'll install this thing, see how it works and we'll kind of go from there. All right, so this whole process is just like installing like a GoPro adapter. You know, it's just got this 3M stuff. What I'm trying to do is keep in mind where somebody would be seeing this on the helmet. So I've got the power button at top, getting it centered up. And I think like right there, it's literally right on top of the AGV logo, but whatever. All right, so that's on. And now we press and hold. I think they said to do this for like 60 seconds or something. So now to get it off, you press it up and off and boom. So on the daily, this is all that would be on the helmet. And then, you know, like if you didn't want to use it for some reason, and then to put it back on is just, so that works really well. As you guys can see, it's super easy to take on and off. All right. Uh, now the question is, does it just work? I can feel the weight of the, like this helmet was a, it's a carbon fiber helmet. It's super light, but I can, I can feel the weight that's back here now, but I'm curious if I'm going to be able to feel that while I'm riding. All right. So now we got it installed on the helmet. So now, uh, I mean, let's just power it up and see what happens off the helmet. That is so freaking cool. So hold on, let's... Dang, son, even... Hold on.
Okay. <laughs> That's really cool. I will say I wish the top button was a little more tactile. I can't really tell I'm hitting it. Oh, so I guess you can do the settings on whichever brake you want constantly on, which I guess would conserve the battery. Could you just leave it pulsating? That's pretty cool. If you can leave it pulsating like that, because then people are going to notice a pulsating light far more than they're going to notice a light that's always on. Quick press is on. Quick press again is the mode. And the off is hold for two seconds. So, one, two. It's, okay, so it's just hold it for two seconds to turn it off. So I'm just stupid. No shock there to anyone. All right, guys, uh, I'm gonna get this thing charged up. I'm gonna do an odd little thing on the MT-10 so we can actually see it working. I'm gonna try a 360 camera off the back of the bike and uh, we'll go around and see what this thing's like. Uh, probably gonna use my Insta 360 1R off the back and that way we can kind of see it on the phone. So uh, let's see how this thing goes. Guys, before we get going, I just have to show you guys the peak level of innovation in order to get the shot that you're about to see. Insta 361R Twin Edition on the extended pole all the way down. Got my sad, like side bag of brackets here and I've clamped it and zip tied it. I try to tell you guys we are nothing but the ultimate in innovation here at Chase on Two Wheels YouTube channel. <laughs> let's just hope it works so you guys can see the little brake thing on the back of my helmet. Alright, let's get into the video. Alright guys, uh... <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see in the GoPro, my long extension pole that has a 360 camera on it. That is going to be the way that we're going to watch this thing work. So if I understand it correctly, ah, this is one of the cool things. I don't have to take my helmet off to turn this thing on. So we've got the flashing lights on right now. I want it full bright. Okay, so we're just going to go for a ride and see how this works. I can see the 360 camera here, so I'm going to see if I'm able to tell if it's working. I do want to try it in this parking lot first. Um, another thing I'm doing is, you know, it's the middle of the day, so it's going to be bright outside, but that's okay because I wanted to test, you know, this thing is supposed to be super bright, so I wanted to see how well you can see it during the daytime. Obviously during when we're underneath this, it'll You'll see. Hopefully in the GoPro you guys can see my brakes and my clutch work and stuff like that. So that's the idea. So if you guys see me pull on this, this is my front brake, or decelerate, ideally this thing will turn on and show that we're braking. So, um, you know, let's do a little U-turn right here and let's get going. I'm going to go like normal and just come to a stop right up here braking braking okay all right uh we'll go this way and try it again and don't do this at home but i'm just gonna watch the 360 camera <laughs> oh my god it worked holy shit oh my goodness that was cool i was just i was just braking and it was doing its thing okay so that seems like it works uh, I guess what I'll do now is I'll just ride around Atlanta and we'll just kind of gather some data and then we'll see what it's like afterwards. Looks like we've got an opportunity, so let's just go. Let's just go and get this filming. All right, we're proceeding, we're proceeding. Engine braking, front braking. I cannot wait to watch this video, man. Also, if we jump to the 360 camera from right here, this is me looking straight. So you guys should be able to tell about where I placed it on the on the helmet. Hopefully I placed it in the right position. And engine braking, do we have anything? Front brakes, do we have anything? A fun little fact, uh, I was looking up brake free while I was getting it charging and stuff like that. And it seems like that brake free was an Indiegogo campaign for this product and they got like fully funded. So 
It's uh, it seems like they have their own website now, so you can actually purchase this product. But it's pretty cool to see an innovative company like coming out with something really cool like that. I did say when I was in the garage, I could feel the weight of this thing. And now that I'm out and about using it, I can definitely say I, I can't tell that it's back there at all. Uh, the weight is basically in, imperceptible. All right, I can see the red light. I'm going to take it off real quick and look at it. All right, let's put it in a different mode. All right, we got in a pulsating mode now. So now it should be kind of pulsing. Another thing I looked up while it was charging is there are three modes to its kind of constant on state. So one of them, all the lights are on, one of them's pulsing, and I think the other one is maybe pulsing very quickly. It was kind of hard to tell. Like, they don't have names for their modes. They just said there's three modes. So uh, we'll kind of cycle through them here while we're riding around. What about, what about low speed braking? I just... What about that? All right, proceeding here. I'm gonna do an, uh, I'm gonna let off throttle here at 33 miles an hour. That's engine braking. That's pretty hard engine brake. I imagine it probably turned on at that point. We had engine braking again. This is interesting. I wish I had like a little, it's not really safe, but I wish I could kind of watch it to see how it is. Engine braking down. So before I left, I forgot to look it up, but uh, I will put the price of this thing on the screen right here. So this is how much this thing cost. You know, like uh, you guys saw the installation, there's no wires, there's no batteries to deal with. It's literally charged it up. And I think it said it had a, it was an eight to 10 or 10 to 12 hour runtime. So this thing is easily gonna be able to handle all of your riding for an entire day. If you're doing a long trip and you're riding every day, you know, you're going to look at charging this thing at night. But again, uh, like I pointed out, you just take it off. I'm going to pull over and see if my little 360 camera is still out. I can't seem to see it. All right. That's about as crank down as I can make that thing. I wonder if I start walking backwards and then stop. Let me try this. I wonder if that made it turn on. Okay, we need to get back to it. All right, so that was the pulsating mode. So let's uh, let's check it out, you know. As you guys can see, it's still pulsating. So let's go to mode, the final mode. Okay, so it's always on, it's pulsating, or it's, uh, it's very minimal. All right, we'll roll with the uh, very minimal mode. Minimal mode, I'm basically naming all these modes now. All right, back to the main streets of ATL. And let's do a quick stop. Whew, that was a lot, that was a lot of stoppage. I don't know, uh, supposedly it has an emergency braking option as well. Like it, I guess it'll flash vigorously. <laughs> what about all these bumps? Is that gonna set it off? because I'm, I'm engine braking too. Engine braking, downshifting. I'm just kind of talking through everything so you guys can kind of have a visual reference of what's happening with it. Engine braking, throttling. All right, engine braking coming into a stop. So these are all kind of exaggerated uses so now what I want to do is I'm just going to ride around and I'm going to ride like normal. I'm not going to brake hard. I'm not going to engine brake unnecessarily. I'm just going to kind of ride like I regularly ride because like I told you guys, I'm kind of interested in this thing as a can it handle, can it do my brake lights for me for my engine braking? You know, so I'll be coming to a stop like this, this red light up here. And I'll just let off right here and kind of just slowly come to a stop. You know, I'm not using my brakes. Rear brake there, front brake right there towards the end. That's how I typically ride, you know. It, it's not really aggressive. It's kind of fluidy. So will it pick that up? You know, that's the important part. That's, that's what makes it worth picking it up and actually using it. Coming into this turn, let off throttle, go through the turn. Let's get on 20. 
just need to see where that takes us. All right. So the highway is somewhere where people never pay attention here in Atlanta. So I love the idea of this thing helping me navigate safer here on the highway. This is also where engine braking is going to be a lot. Like right there, engine braking slows me down plenty. What this is also going to do is test it out with how bright this thing is because we are we are at noon right now, guys. It does not get much brighter than how bright it is right now. And if, uh, if you're able to see it in that camera, then that is definitely a good thing. So let's throttle up. We're in fourth gear and then we're engine braking right there. Still coming to a slow stop and then we're back. Alright, I'm actually braking right here because I see that car pulling out. So what's it doing right now? I'm actively braking with the front brake. Alright, what I'm about to do I don't recommend anybody doing. But got the bike set on cruise control. I want to change the modes to the rider setting. I want to get around this car real quick though. Going a little slow. Alright, we got the bike set just going. We're gonna pull it off. It's a very not smart thing to do right here. Alright. It's on the always on setting. Is that on? Yep, all right, that's back on, cool. Don't do that at home. Very not safe. I have no, <laughs> I have no justification for why I did that, other than I'm too lazy to pull off the side of the road. All right guys, I'm gonna cruise around on the highway for a minute, and then when I find a location to get off the road, I gotta find some shade. Whenever I find that location, we'll set the camera up and I'll look through the footage to see when it was turning on and when it was turning off. But for now, I'm just gonna kinda ride like none of these cameras are on and you know, just do my normal thing. We've got all the cameras synced up, so if anything cool happens, we got it. So uh, let's just do that. entirely lit wall that will work out just right for us. Alright guys, we found this a really good spot. I'm going to set the camera up and we'll uh, start reviewing this footage. Ah, very excited to see what this looks like. Alright guys, so uh, actually you know what I should do? I should turn this off now. One, two, boom, off. Okay, cool. All right, so now we have all the footage. Now you guys have already seen the footage, but I haven't yet. So I'm watching it for the first time. Oh, that's, that's crazy that it works in the parking lot. I love it. All right, so, so far it looks to be doing really good. I want to see what it did when I did that little emergency braking situation. Oh, it did. It started doing that emergency thing where it does the braking and lights up, but then it like starts vividly flashing. All right, guys, uh, I got to say, this thing is pretty neat. And the fact that it's light enough to where I can't really feel it uh, makes it an awesome choice. I forget how much it costs, but as long as it doesn't cost more than like 200 bucks, this thing could be a legitimate thing to grab to add to your safety. Now, I do want to say that I didn't notice cars noticing me more than I typically do, but I wasn't really paying attention to that because I'm trying to pay attention to what I'm doing. But as far as an actual unit, this thing does a phenomenal job of alerting people that you're slowing down or, or you know, whether it be engine braking, emergency braking, using your actual brakes front or rear, anytime you're coming, you're slowing down, this thing's gonna light up. So if you guys are in the market for something, you know, like, 
super safety oriented, this thing, uh, this thing might be the ticket. I'm gonna leave a link to this thing down below if you guys are really safety minded and wanna grab one for yourself. I may or may not have a discount code. I'll talk with Break Free and see if I can get you guys like a little C2 dub discount code or something like that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go right around and uh, feel a little bit safer <laughs> now that I have this thing on the back of my head. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments, is this something you guys would wanna pick up? Like how safety minded are you? I'm not typically in that safety minded stuff, but I love the idea and I love the options being out there in the market for people that are super safety minded. And guys, I'm Chase on Two Wheels. It's a beautiful day, so I'm going to go enjoy my MT-10 a little longer. I will see you guys on the next video. I appreciate you guys running around with me, and I'll see you on the next one. Later. You guys let me know what you thought about the little 360 cam at the top. Uh, it's a little, you know, at the, it's at the peak of innovation. <laughs> Hopefully that camera worked out and actually used it to show it. It kind of looks like a little drone is following me around. So, uh, outro crew, <laughs> let me know what you think about that thing. I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.